Hi, in today's video I would like to show you the difference between static and dynamic imbalance. And to do that I'll use the same wheels, nuts and bolts that I've used before to demonstrate the moment of inertia. And I'll also be using this shaft. Now this shaft consists of two handles on either end connected to each other via this steel rod in the middle. And around that steel rod this white bit can rotate freely supported on two bearings on either end. This red shaft is tapered and square. So I can take one of these wheels with its square hole in the middle and slide it over the shaft like this. And because of the taper in the red shaft, the wheel will not fall down on its own. Now, this first example is balanced, both statically and dynamically. The center of mass lies on the axis of rotation, so if I put this wheel in any random orientation, we see that it doesn't really try to look for the lowest point, except of course that I didn't make it entirely accurately. And the second consequence is that if I spin up this shaft, I feel no significant vibrations in my hands. For this next example, I'll remove one of the bolts and nuts on the wheel which causes the center of mass to no longer be on the axis of rotation. And one consequence is that if I put this wheel in some random orientation, it behaves a lot like a pendulum. And this wheel is now no longer statically balanced. And the second consequence is that if I spin up this wheel, I see very heavy vibrations in my hands. Now I'd like to show you dynamic imbalance. So on this wheel I fitted some longer bolts, but on the top end here the bolts point to the left, while on the other end the bolt points to the right. And so if I put this wheel on the shaft, the center of mass is still on the axis of rotation. So again, if I put this in a random orientation, the wheel doesn't have a preferred direction. And yet, when I spin up this wheel, I do feel vibrations in my hands. I'd now like to explain where these vibrations come from. In the case of static imbalance, if you have all eight bolt positions filled and so the wheel is balanced, the center of mass is in the center of the wheel. And so if you fill in the formula for centrifugal force, you see that the force is zero because the radius is zero, because the center of mass is on the axis of rotation. And the other way of looking at this is simply saying that every bolt experiences a centrifugal force, but they all have a matching bolt on the opposite end of the wheel that experiences the same but opposite force. But what happens now if I remove one of these bolts? Well, in that case, the center of mass shifts slightly. So in that case, the center of mass would end up somewhere around here, let's say. And in that case, this formula over here would no longer yield zero. It would yield some positive value. And in the other way of looking at things, the force on this bolt over here would no longer be balanced out because the bolt over here is no longer there. Um, whichever method you choose, you will get the same answer for how large this centrifugal force is. But the centrifugal force, in this case, points over here. But as this wheel is rotating, that centrifugal force will constantly point in other directions. And that's what causes the wheels to vibrate. I'd now like to take a look at dynamic imbalance. And for that, we'll take a look at these wheels from the side on, like this. In this case, we again see the centrifugal forces on the nuts, but in this case, the forces are not on the same line. So in the balanced case, we have the centrifugal force over here balanced with the centrifugal force over here. But now the forces are no longer on the same line. And this means that while the total force on the wheel is zero, the total torque is not. And because of this, the wheel experiences a tilting torque going this way. And again, just like with static imbalance, this torque changes direction constantly, which causes this wheel to vibrate. 
The previous examples may seem a bit contrived. That would never happen in real life, right? Well, it does, but usually due to slightly different causes. So what I have here is a wheel where the hole for the shaft is not exactly on the center of the wheel. It is a millimeter off to the side. And so this causes this wheel to be statically imbalanced. So again, we see that if you put this in a random orientation, that the wheel behaves a lot like a pendulum. And once again, if we spin up this wheel, we see slight vibrations in the shaft, though in this case, the imbalance isn't very severe. The next example I'd like to show you is this white wheel. In this case, the hole for the shaft is correctly in the center, but it is not at the right angle. So the hole for the shaft should go roughly in this direction, and yet it is angled this direction by about five degrees. And this causes the wheel to be slightly off kilter. So this wheel is again statically balanced because the center of mass is on the axis of rotation, but much like this wheel here, this wheel is dynamically imbalanced. And so if I spin it up real fast, I should feel slight vibrations in my hands. But these vibrations are quite weak because the imbalance is um, quite mild. So let me show you a different technique to spin up this wheel faster so we can see the vibrations. I've now set up this shaft with one end resting on my thigh and I'm holding up the other end with one of my hands. And that gives me a free hand to really spin up this shaft. And now you can clearly see the vibrations on my thigh. Now, static and dynamic imbalance are usually phenomena that you want to avoid. And first of all, of course, you must design your parts properly, but perhaps more importantly, you must ensure that any holes that you drill for the shafts are on center and are also at the right angle. Now, the phenomenon that I've shown you today are better felt than seen, really. So I highly recommend that you print and build one of these yourself and play around with one. The files for that you can find in the description below. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and have a great night.